God can use bruised people. You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net, bringing Jesus to your face. Let's dig deeper into the scriptures, into the truths of the Bible, and life in general. Let's go higher with God. This morning, you know, I'm doing my social media. I'm sharing my stuff. I'm thinking, I don't know what to talk about. And then I see someone from church posts a meme from Lecrae, and I think, well, that's cool. I'll share that. Um, I don't know if I'm going to talk about that. So I have to get away. I've got to step away from all the social media and start going into the backyard, maybe go for a prayer walk and just like, Lord, what, what do you want me to talk about? So I grab a banana, you know, for breakfast. I'm unpeeling this banana, this nice, succulent, perfect banana. I'm unpeeling it. And as I'm about to eat it. It breaks in half, and it falls in slow motion. I can almost hear it going, oh, splat onto the kitchen floor. I'm sitting here. I'm like going, my banana. Oh, no. My banana is ruined. There's no way I can eat that. It's hit the floor. It's damaged goods. So as I reach down to pick it up and that squishy banana starts falling apart in my fingers, the Lord says he can use bruised people. And I'm like, oh, wow, there you go. Yesterday I was learning wisdom from an ant. Now I'm learning from a banana (laughs) that fell on the kitchen floor. You know, Jesus was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities. And a lot of the people in the Bible, they had iniquities. They worked iniquity. You know, the psalmist says, I've kept myself from my iniquity. He he still didn't make it. You know, David, David had problems. But God uses broken people pastor at uh, Solid Rock has been teaching about how God took us somebody, made him a nobody so he could tell everybody about God. You know, he, he's been talking about Moses. Moses had a miraculous birth. Everything about Moses is just like this awesome example. Moses, you know, they were supposed to kill the babies, and let's just kill all the male babies. And uh, anyway, so his mom saw that he was a beautiful child, and she must have known the story of Noah and the ark because she made an ark for Moses. And he was in the water. The pastor pointed this out too. I thought it was cool. She put the ark in the water to deliver her son. Like Noah was delivered in the ark. Then Pharaoh's daughter took him up and she treated him as is if he was her own. She, he was in royalty. But you know, the, the interesting thing is, is Moses had so much favor that Pharaoh's daughter hires Moses' his real mom, high, pays, pays her to take care of him. I'm like, well, man, that'll preach. I mean, wow, just look at the life of Moses. Now, Moses was being groomed for royalty. I don't know if he was actually in line to be Pharaoh, but it's possible. It's possible. It's not necessary for this illustration that I'm going through today, but he could have been Pharaoh. He was raised by those people. They knew he was a Hebrew, and he knew he was a Hebrew. And Moses had this inner conflict. You know, he was suffering with dual identity. Is he an Egyptian or is he a Hebrew? And it wasn't just that identity. He felt a call, and we can see later on, he wanted to deliver his people from the bondage they were in. He saw they were suffering. You know, let my people go. You know, you're you're hearing this in the spirit as Moses is 
pursuing his call. And one of the things that happens when we have this call, it's, it's, it's unmistakable. It's undeniable. You know, many are called, few are chosen. Moses felt this call throughout his entire life. He was surrounded by the evidence he was to deliver his people. It was intuitive. It was spiritual. But it was yearning. You know, a call is not something that you just invent over the dinner table. I think I'm going to be a philosopher. No. It's something deep ingrained. And Moses had it deep ingrained in him. He was going to deliver his people. He probably couldn't even articulate that call. He just had an inner passion, a desire, Latin of the Father. God plants those desires in us. And one of the things that happens when we sense a call, we're not mature enough in our relationship with God, and we try to treat a call as a commission. We're not mature enough. A commission means, okay, you're ready, go. Right? And this whole story is about Moses getting ready to do his call, his commission. Here is Moses. He wants to deliver his brothers. He's got this desire. He doesn't know how to do it, so he does, he does what we call having an Ishmael. God had promised Abraham, Isaac, you know, this through this seed, everybody's going to be blessed. Uh, your children are going to be more than the sand of the sea. And all this time was going by, and Abraham starts looking at the storm like Peter did. You know, I got a word from God, but there's all these sowing, things sowing seeds of doubt and unbelief that I'm going to look at the storm, and I'm going to sink, and I'm going to have an Ishmael. <laughs> Ishmael is when Abraham and Sarah start talking it over. You know, like, I, I know God said we're going to have a seed, but, you know, years have gone by, and I just don't see... I don't see I don't see in the natural how this is going to work. But God's a God of miracles, right? They mess up and they invite Hagar, which is an Egyptian. <laughs> She's an Egyptian and then they have Ishmael. And Ishmael turns out to be a thorn in the children of Israel's sides for centuries. Moses, the way he has his Ishmael, he fills this he feels this call, he feels this desire, and this call is so strong, he thinks it's a commission. He's not mature enough yet. So he finds an opportunity to let the devil use him, <laughs> basically. But, you know, just so you guys know, the devil is just the unwilling servant of God. You know, look at look at the way... God and Satan have the conversation about Job. Okay, you can do this, but only so far. The, the devil can't even go past what God wants. So they're fighting, and, and uh, the Egyptian gets murdered by Moses. So Moses tries to fulfill his call through murder. He gets busted, so he just decides to flee. He just leaves. Moses has left the building. He forsakes the other life of him being possibly Pharaoh, something up there in royalty. And it takes 40 years for him to get Egypt out of himself. And when I when I think about that, you know, I, I'm, I'm turned off TV like back in the 90s. 95% I don't watch TV for a decade, and then, like, I'm almost 100% right now. I never watch it except, like, when I'm in a restaurant and it happens to be on. The thing that bothers me is from when I wit did watch TV, I can still sing those commercials. I mean, commercials stick with you, you know, forever. <laughs> I don't know. It'll probably be 300 years before I forget the Rolaids commercial. In this example, we say that you had to get Egypt out of Moses so that then he is usable. But keep in mind, Pharaoh could no longer use Moses because he was a murderer. He is damaged goods in the eyes of the Egyptian kingdom. 
Nobody will ever trust Moses to be in a hierarchy of authority in Egypt because, hey, you know what? That he's actually a Hebrew. His true colors show. We can't trust him to be in Egyptian government. And it, it's amazing that earlier on, Joseph was second in authority. So Moses still had the call. But something tells me that he, he let it die. He just kind of like, you know, I can't do this. I've got this desire, but there's nothing I can do about it. He flees from the face of Pharaoh. He goes out in the wilderness, and he binds himself with some people in that area. Jethro, I remember, his, he gets married as a girl, and his father's law is named Jethro. And that always blows my mind because I think of the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> See, I hadn't got TV out of me. So basically, Moses became a nobody. You know, he was going to be a somebody, then he became a nobody, and everybody forgot about him, basically. And then God comes to him 40 years later. Are you waiting on God? Moses no longer wanted fame. He didn't want the call. As a matter of fact, when you, when you read the encounter of Moses and God, He's like, send somebody else. I don't want to do this. I can't talk. And God got angry with him. He said, okay, well, here's Aaron. So I'm going to tell you, this is just one example of damaged goods where God used them for his glory, not our glory. So on Lecrae's post today, some of these were mentioned, and then I, I thought of some more. But, you know, we know that Moses was a murderer, right? God used him. Abraham lied a couple of times, right? Sarah laughed at God's promise. (laughs) See, remember when he promised her a baby and she laughed? She laughed at God. She had the baby anyway. Timothy had ulcers. Remember him? Paul's like, you know, take a little wine for your stomach's sake, Timothy, you know. (laughs) Hosea's wife was a prostitute. Hosea's wife was a prostitute. Jacob was a liar. His very name uh, was Supplanter, and then he became the father of many nations, right? David, David, dude, just look at David's life. Now, this is the interesting thing about David. His heart was always after God, and he still messed up. David had a, you know, he lusted with his eyes. He had an affair with Bathsheba. He murdered Uriah the Hittite, right? He was used of the devil to count number Israel. (laughs) You know, Satan moved, Satan moved David to count Israel. Remember, the people said he was too young, too. He was too young. What do you mean? He didn't even come to the table when Samuel was picking him. David, you know, in the eyes of man, I think it's even said there, it says, you know, God doesn't look the way man does. He looks upon the heart. And David had a heart for God. Solomon, you know, by today's standards, he's too rich. We go, oh, man, he's too rich. He's just doing his money thing. Well, look at Jesus. By today's standards, he was too poor. He had no place to lay his head, right? Um, Abraham, going back to Abraham, he was too old. Remember? Peter... He kept shooting off his mouth. He didn't think before he spoke. He even denied Jesus. Jonah ran from God. He heard from God very clearly and ran the other way. Paul, the apostle Paul that I'm always talking about, consented to murdering Christians. You know, he was holding the clothes of those that slew Stephen. He persecuted Christ. And look at this. Paul was used to write two-thirds of the New Testament. Elijah was burnt out. He ran away from Jezebel in fear. Samson had long hair. He slept around and lost his temper. Noah got drunk. (laughs) God used all of these people in spite of their problems. Isn't that interesting? I think that's encouraging. Amen. So if you have a bad past, I'm going to share a scripture with you. This is one that changed my life, and I I say it every couple of months. I was in the throes of depression, and 
I was really struggling. And this little little lady named Vicky, she's from Columbia. She's a friend of the family. She's always witnessing to people in the restaurants and Walmart. I mean, her life is about telling people about Jesus. She grabbed my hand. She said, Condred. You know, I can see. He has this cool way of talking. She looked at me in my eyes, and she was crying. And she said, don't look back. Don't look back. Don't look back. So it hit me, you know, no man putting his hand to the prowl, looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. What resonated even stronger in my spirit was Philippians 3.13, and this has kind of become my life verse. And if you're damaged goods, if you've had a bad past, you know, God can use you. God can use you. As a matter of fact, you know, remember when Jesus was, ta- uh, the, the woman was washing Jesus' feet with her tears and using her hair to wipe the feet, and then Pharaoh, this the Pharaoh, pfft, isn't that funny? I said Pharaoh, Pharisee. The Pharisee was sitting there judging Jesus. Like, oh, if this man was a prophet. You know, he was all haughty in the estimation of himself while she became just nothing. She knew she just loved Jesus and she was nothing. She did. Would you do that? Would you wipe someone's feet with your tears and dry it off with your hair? There's no pride in that at all. No pride in that at all. We read about her in the Bible, in a good example. We read about the man judging her in a bad light. So Philippians 3.13 and 14 has become my life verse, and I'm going to read it and share it with you. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth Unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So if you got a bad past, if you got a bad yesterday, if you had a bad this morning, God can use you. Amen. Thank you for being a part of Conrad Rocks. Uh, Remember, you can support this podcast ministry. If you're hearing this, there's a support page at conradrocks.net. It's your offerings that keep this going. You can also share this with your friends and family. Please consider sharing this with your friends and family on Facebook, Twitter, G+. Also, you know, tell people about it in public. Have you heard the Conrad Rocks Coffee with Conrad podcast? I'd appreciate it. God bless you. Till we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Hi, this is John with John Java House. This is the Kid Renegade Redeemed with Forever Redeemed Ministries. This is Amy from Amy Daily. This is Tiffany White with Hey Ministries. This is Dan the Coffee Man. Christine White, I'm a stander for the Lord. This is Glenda Linkus from WingsOfProphecy.com. Jill Dyson from Angel Street Ministry. This is Drew Teacup Ministry for Women. This is Marianne Sanson from Google Plus. This is Charles Michael from France. Holy Desperation Ministries.org. Jackie Smith from the Intent. Christian Panure Podcast. This is Janet with Overcoming Abuse God's Way. Spreading-joy.org. This is Gerald Thomas in New Hebron, Mississippi. This is the Mordecai from Oklahoma. This is Vicki at Michael Towns of New Beginnings. This is Stephen Barrett from Holy Fire, Japan. We are happy coffee with Conrad. ConradRocks.net. Conrad Rocks, TuneIn Radio.